the story tonight at 10. The idea was this it's ready, a TV the show for the 25th birthday. All about the anniversary and how happy we are. A lot's happened in rock and roll in the last 25 years, and WLS has been here for all of it. People think that I've been at WLS since the station started in 1924. No, it just seems that long. Actually, I got here in 1967, which was a little too late to fully enjoy a slightly different format than you're hearing now. Farm was the format in the old days, the prairie farmer days. Boy, it was a happy bunch of employees, barn dancing it night after night. Sears Roebuck owned the station first, world's largest store, they called it, WLS for short. And there's one day in history I know you remember. WLS had the only reporter on the scene. Oh, four or five hundred feet into the sky, and it, it's a terrific crash, ladies and gentlemen, the smoke and the flames now. Andy Framer's crashing to the ground, not quite to the flooring mat. From news to country music, the farm days continued for more than 30 years until a warm spring day in May 1960 when the first rock and roll song was played. 1960! Here's love, lover. I was one of the people who said it wasn't going to work so much for what I knew. Uh, I knew Gene Taylor and Sam Holman in Milwaukee. And when they told me they were coming down here to turn the Prairie Farmer into a rock and roll station, I said, you guys are nuts. On top of a pizza, all covered with cheese. It's a good time for the good sound of music with Dick Biondi. I used to sit in the barracks at night and listen to Dick Biondi at night on WLS. And I thought to myself, my God, if this guy can make it in the big city, so can I. I couldn't sleep at all last night. I was working in the lab late one night. Venus, if you will, my motto me. Better shop around. Go get all my life I wanted to be at WLS. Gene Taylor called and got me the barber chair. It's like, how'd you like to come to uh, Chicago for about uh, 500 bucks a week? Big bread, you know. I mean, you're looking at 1963. And I said, Whew. And I sat down in a barber's chair, and, and the guy said, what happened, uh, your ma die? You know, I said, <laughs> I'm going to Chicago. The image of WLS as I remember it, and, and, and we were all told to just go in there and have a good time. The format is this. We have, we have a great jingle package. We have the WLS survey. Play the music, have a good time. WLS Personality 1963. And everybody calls it the Sugar Shack. Cause a night has a thousand eyes. Something has happened here. We understand it is finished, Judy. The presidential car coming up now. We know it's the presidential car. You see Mrs. Kennedy's pink suit. After the shock of November 1963, we were eager to embrace anything that would make us feel good again. And we got it in the form of an invasion. It's been a hard day's night. She loves you, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to hold your hand. I want to hold your hand. WLS was the station that introduced the Beatles to Chicago. In fact, uh, the Beatles were first released on VJ Records, which was a local Chicago label, and WLS played those songs. And there was an interesting story the other day that Ron Riley told on the air uh, about how they played those records 
early and uh, and they didn't work. I still think today the Beatles are not going to make it. So <laughs> just for the fun of it, I started Beatles Fan Club number one. And there was about maybe two, three hundred very hip kids out there who had read the same fan magazines and wanted to join the Beatles fan club. So when the Beatles did hit, well, we had a ready-made fan club for them to start with. Gee, those guys look great, especially Ron Ringo Riley. I jumped on every magical bandwagon that came along. When Batman came along, it was fun. I was on the Batman show. I went out to California. I was played a part, put makeup on, wore a hat, and interacted with Batman and Robin. 1965. I remember specifically that WLS was one of the major stations that we were supposed to hit. And they said, now you're going to WLS, now you gotta be cool and, and talk about this record. And if we get it on WLS, boy, we got it made. WLS actually ex exposed turtle music to probably a good part of enough of the country because so many stations watched it for what it played. They were probably directly responsible for getting us out there and, and getting people in the Midwest to know who the Buckinghams were. When we played, the whole country really picked up on it. We literally made hits in the station. Love is only true and fairy tale. And she and Billy Joe was throwing something off the Tallahatchie. Hey, Jude, don't make it bad. Sock hops were our lifeblood because we covered such a large area. And in those days, there wasn't even a telephone in the studio. So you didn't have that feedback from the audience. And the way in which you got it was to go out in the hinterlands and actually get out there and boogie with them. Yeah, I used to do three hops in a night on an airplane and still make it on the air, uh, or, or back from or as soon as I'd get off the air, get on a plane, uh, Miggs Air Terminal, hit, you know, Indiana, Rockford, and one other place, do a walk on, here's, you know, peace and posters, kids could buy, you know, and do another place. 1968! Yeah! What They lost me in a psychedelic era. That's where I guess I didn't really understand what was going on. Uh, we had we had a dog uh, that we called that just died a couple of days ago named Saffron. So Saffron was here when I was on the air. That's when we got her as a pup. And the reason her name is Saffron is from Mellow Yellow. That was the only thing I could remember except Electric Banana. Well, it's certainly uh, during that period of time when the, the, the psychedelic songs and the drugs and so on were, were so prevalent, it, uh, it sure made it hard to go to concerts. <laughs> One, the music was awfully loud, and, and number two, uh, it was hard to breathe, and, uh, and number three, it was hard to go backstage and get an interview. Nobody was doing anything. Nobody was dancing. I mean, you couldn't dance to this stuff. They just sat there looking half dead and very scary. Excuse me while I kiss this guy. It now seems fitting that the moon landing came at the end of the 60s. It signaled that a decade of turbulence was over. The 70s promised peace, prosperity, and some of the worst songs in music history. This is the dawning of birthday <laughs> I think it's manufactured enthusiasm I don't I don't think anybody cares 1970 I think the soft rock of what the uh, <clears throat> The mid-70s really was boring. I had the misfortune of being on the radio at a time when music was at its worst. The music from the 70s, Heartbeat, It's a Love Beat by the DeFranco family, Billy, Don't Be a Hero by Bo Donaldson, I Think I Love You, the Partridge family, The Night Chicago Died, Paper Lace, 
Need I go on? And when you turn on the radio and hear Fire and Rain from James Taylor about uh, another one of those tragedy songs about just yesterday morning that they let me know you were gone, the Joni Mitchell, I mean, I have nothing against these artists, don't get me wrong, but it just wasn't exciting. Everything lost its poignancy. You know, Jim Morrison died, Jimi Hendrix died, the, the people who were the, uh, the, the cornerstones of, uh, of music uh, OD'd and passed away, and there wasn't anything to look forward to anymore. Uh, a couple of records stand out in my mind in the 70s that I absolutely hated. Uh, one of them was a hit here in 1974 when I first came here. That was The Show Must Go On by Three Dog Night. Every time I had to play that record, I cringed. If you're playing the same record, which we were, about every hour and a half, and if that record happens to be Disco Duck, yeah, after a while, you're going to climb the walls and say, if I hear that thing one more time, I'm going through the wall. Look at me. The disco oh, no. Jeremiah was a bullfrog The first time You're so vain We had an influx of kind of less than great rock and roll in those years. We had, I think, Gilbert O'Sullivan and uh, Feelings and Tie a Yellow Ribbon and a bunch of things that, that kind of took some of the guts out of rock and roll. So it made the, made the problem a little harder from just a music point of view. But that music has never been the heart and soul of WLS. It's always been what you do between the records. So we could even work around that. Charlie Van Dyke, biggest voice on the smallest person in the history of broadcasting. I remember one time sitting in for him and hoping that just by sitting in the same chair my voice would get deeper. It didn't. Channel 7 is here uh, doing a tape thing with me. Are all my nose hairs tucked in? Huh? <laughs> Fred Winston, Jose Cuervo, uh, picked me up at O'Hare when I flew in from Atlanta in a limo and he rode in the back seat. Chuck Knapp was one of the original Cosmic Muffins. The guy was an absolute festival to know because reality was only a vague concept he'd heard somewhere during the time he was on the air. Da -da -da -da, John Records, Landecker. Famous jingle. John Landecker, probably one of the most creative disc jockeys in the country, uh, then or now. Well, you were pushing, mm -hmm. pushing the envelope mm -hmm. there a little bit Absolutely. in the 70s, and you were kind of the social consciousness, social conscience of the, of the station. I mean, the staff yeah. meetings would be, you know, Landecker yelling about what music we should or should not be playing, Lou Jack with a rolled up uh, newspaper just looking into outer space. Pretending he had a periscope. <laughs> with his Win feet up. Yeah. With his feet up. Winston saying <clears throat> nothing, but every 10 minutes he would just get up and say, Oh, fire everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the music of the 70s may have been lame, but the contests and the prizes weren't. WLS gave away records, cash, vacations, even a house. The giveaways were supposed to keep WLS listeners from jumping to arch rival WCFL, but that didn't stop some people. The man with no name listens to the world famous Tom Murphy every morning on Super CFL. You listen to Tom Murphy, because he's my friend. For some reason, um, uh, so at Lou Jack became LS and CFL there for a while, and it was uh, hyped up in the press, and um, the ratings were reported with great regularity, and we became the symbols for our stations there. CFL at that time was starting to edge LS. So I came in while the tide was going in the CFL Big Ten direction. And uh, that's what made it fun, because it was a battle, and we did turn it around. In March of 1976, the war came to an end. WCFL changed to a beautiful music format, and WLS stood alone as the rock of Chicago. An original rocker. The only one. WLS. The promise of America is opportunities, not guarantees. That challenge lit a fire under countless entrepreneurs who started businesses that boomed and built the country. Today, I still see enormous opportunities in the hundreds of small to mid-sized companies whose new ideas, new jobs, and new technologies will continue to build America. At First Jersey Securities, we specialize in discovering such emerging growth companies. For today's investors with vision, First Jersey Securities, come grow with us. 
There's a man who always seems to do the right thing at the right time. He knows the things that count are the things that last. His work, his home, his time with his family. A small but enduring part of all this is the shoe he wears. And if you think that means Florsheim, you're right. Florsheim has been making American classics for almost a century. And we see no reason to stop now. Florsheim, when you know what's right. What's inside a jar of Kretschmer wheat germ? Kretschmer wheat germ. Added to your diet, added to your life. The dealing's great. It's the Nissan Dealathon. Inventory's up, so your Nissan dealer wants to talk deals on every family car in stock. He's determined to keep Centra America's best-selling import, and he's going to clear inventory on his family-loving stanza. And the king of the highway, the powerful Nissan Maxima. So don't just sit there. Come on in. It's the Nissan Dealathon. Get your best deal now at your all-American Metro Datsun dealer. They came to Greece for a little romance. I can't tell you how this place turns me on. Until she entered their lives. I like her. Now they're sharing the kind of love fantasies are made of. Their summer islands becoming an exotic playground. I'm so excited, and I just can't hide it. Fall under the spell of summer madness and get a taste of the sweet life. So Daryl Hannah in Summer Lovers. Tonight at 1045 on 7. Hi, this is Steve St. Stevens. And Gary St. Gary. And it's 307 on WLS AM 89. 67 degrees. You light up my life. You know, when I came to WLS, I had heard Larry a number of years ago. And, and thought that Larry was fantastic. It was unfortunate at WCFL, they didn't let him do very much. Beautiful music, all day, all night, WCFL. Oh, what's Larry? He's, what, 83 years old now. I heard him when I was a kid. Larry's too gruff, you know. The other day, he, he just quit smoking and drinking coffee. I went up to him, I said, hey, how's it going? I was genuinely concerned. He went, about average. And I went, why waste your time talking to guys like that? Steve, it's an image. He yeah, really just wants to be an idol. It's an image, except that I'm here in the station, and I was at the Steve, front desk getting my messages. I don't need his image. It's like the Easter Bunny going out without the costume on. We had a jock meeting uh, every once in a while, about once every uh, three weeks or so. They'd get all the announcers together in the conference room here, and uh, all the rest of us would sit at the table while Mike McCormick, the program director, would be slamming his fist on the table going, Damn it, now damn it, now damn it, now damn it, now damn it. And Lar would be over laying on his back in a corner of the conference room with the Chicago Tribune rolled up, looking up at the ceiling, and all of a sudden, after about 20 minutes, he'd say, Mike, there's a fly up there on the ceiling. Time for Larry Lujak's animal story. Larry Lujak, super jaws. Actually, animal stories started when I was first doing the morning show. Only at that time, it wasn't called Animal Stories. At that time, we had some dippy farm program on at 5.30 in the morning. So I started going through farm magazines and finding these bizarre stories about farm animals killing the farmers and things like that. And doing this and logging it as public service, a uh, five-minute farm show with uh, all the sex and violence that I could get into it. I wouldn't have it any other way. Right, little Tommy? Right, Uncle Lair. Good morning, chillins. It's time for Animal Stories.
Well, her on-air presence and attitude was to try to get away with as much and have as much fun as the boss would allow, and we would always try to go over that line. Wait, what happened was we got into a roundabout discussion about Debbie Boone's You Light Up My Life. Uh, so John and I are going back and forth. I don't want to play this song, John. You have to play the song. It's number one. I don't want to play it. It doesn't fit. Back and forth, back and forth. I say, look, compromise. I'll play it in installments. We timed it out so that Debbie Boone started at 6.10. You heard the first note. The last note of You Light Up My Life was heard at 9.59.50 as I was leaving the air. I guess we can say that LS has its best success when the people on the air are allowed to be freest, something I think management should remember. I think I just try to be myself. And if I can see something that's going on that I find it's interesting or a distorted perception that I think is funny, uh, I'll try to slip it in. We talked earlier uh, today about uh, uh, guys who were kind of laughing and cackling and having a good time. But if the guys at the station aren't having a good time, the audience isn't going to have a good time either. And WLS people always were allowed to, and even if they weren't allowed to, they did have a good time. Every single day. When Coldwell Banker Real Estate helps you find and buy your home, you get something extra, the Sears Home Buyer Savings Book. Because as part of the Sears Financial Network, we can help you save on things like washers, dryers, TVs and VCRs, tools, paint, and more. So if you're buying a home, call Coldwell Banker. You can save at Sears and get the home you've always wanted. Coldwell Banker Real Estate, the home sellers, a member of the Sears Financial Network. Welcome to the real world of dairy goodness. Experience nutritious, delicious, real dairy delights. Mmm, luscious cheese, rich sour cream, smooth milk, tangy yogurt, creamy cottage cheese. All healthy and wholesome, loaded with protein, vitamins, and calcium. Look for the real seal for real dairy flavor. Welcome to the real world. The good news is that Weight Watchers has added an absolutely gorgeous pepperoni pizza to their delicious pizza family. So how could there be any bad news? That personal touch, it's personal. Jet America introduces that personal touch for less. Personal care, personal pride, that feeling you get when you fly. Jet America, that personal touch, Jet America, that personal touch. Personally, I fly Jet America because they treat me like I own the place. That personal touch. So that's 25 years of rock and roll with WLS. Now, chances of me being here for the 50th anniversary are slim and none, leaning heavily toward none, but I hope you will be. I'm Larry Lujak. Bah. Art Roberts, WLS. Well, I guess that's going to do it for tonight. Till tomorrow, this has been a work of art. Excelsior. Hey, Chicago Land of the World on the Big 89, WLS, Ron Riley. And I'll see you tonight out of Brother Rice High School. In the meantime, let's listen to a brand new song by the Beatles. Sounds like this. Hi, this is Mother Weber's oldest son, Clark. Thanks so much for tuning into the Big 89, and thanks for putting me on. Hi, everybody. I'm Don Phillips on good old Channel 89 with East of Midnight. This is Chuck Buell from WLS in the nighttime. Hi, everybody. I'm Chris Eric Stevens, your young and wild Friday's child, rebel on the radio, <laughs> high atop the stone container building, blasting out the hiss on your entire face. It's nice to be here. Scotty Brink, WLS. What time is it? Hi, everybody. Music and news to lose the blues right here on Music Radio AMWLS. And I'm J.J. Jeffrey, and I've got a lot of nice songs. You're going to hear some ballads and some jump tunes. Hi, this is Steve King, and don't you try to lay no boogie-woogie on the king of rock and roll, especially when it's the 25th anniversary of WLS Music Radio. 
Hello, this is John Landecker, and Records truly is my middle name. Charlie Van Dyke in the morning on Music Radio, WLS. Well, this is the Napper on WLS in Chicago, and about 10 or 15 years ago when I was here, I was kind of making my voice sound like Charlie Van Dyke, and it was a little bit deeper uh, than it is now. On uh, WLS, uh, the Rock of Chicago, 1972 and 1973. Good night, big city. Yesterday's memory As modern as tomorrow WLS in Chicago You have been listening to WLS, the Prairie Farmer Station, Chicago. It's the end of the program. Roy Knapp is at the chimes. Good night, all. We'll be with you tomorrow.